So welcome to episode 117 of She Leads Confidently, your go-to podcast for a mega dose of inspiration and leadership magic. I'm Karen Barno, diving in with you to the world of fearless women who are here to shake things up, share their stories, and elevate not just themselves, but all of us. Think of this as your personal masterclass in breaking through healing and thriving. Our guests, they're the real deal. Women who have turned obstacles into stepping stones and silence and their silence into powerful voices leading the way and living out loud. So whether you're changing, charging up the career ladder, finding your voice, or just ready to be that next level you, you have found your tribe. Here we're all about bold moves, big hearts, and unstoppable confidence. Ready to light up your leadership and begin to live your best life? Let's dive in. Today's going to be a little bit more vulnerable than what I'm used to. I'm not, I'm not one of those people that, that really dive into vulnerability, but whenever it seems like I open myself up to do inner work, and I've been doing an incredible amount over the past couple years, you know, part of it is I realize I never really tell my full story, you know, about how I was in an epic accident, had a head injury on top of a childhood that had a lot of issues, and in some podcasts, I'll go through all that, but I have dealt with a lot of imposter syndrome. And for those of you that don't typically follow me, I'm a CEO of an assisted living, living association that I helped to, I helped found, find. I founded with three millionaires and a billionaire 27 years ago, and we grew assisted living in Arizona. That was back when nobody even knew what assisted living was. In fact, when we put the association together, people are like, that's never going to work because you have skilled nursing. What do we need assisted living for? Nobody's going to move in there. Clearly the four of us were, you know, the five of us were correct and the naysayers were wrong. So when you build build an association and you're the one that got the job because everybody else was three millionaires and a billionaire and I was making 38,000 a year when they offered me 40,000 and said that they thought I would think that would be great money, I did and I took the job. So over the years, I developed a lot of imposter syndromes who am I to be in this job? I would run into people that had um, certified association exec behind their titles, you know, that had all the right alphabet acronyms in their title, and I had nothing. Or people that, you know, spent 40 years building associations, and all I had was, you know, the desire not to, the desire to run through a wall and not be smart enough to know that it was something that was really hard to do. So I, I gathered these imposter syndromes, and one that I, that, I picked up on that I actually had in child, childhood. And most of the imposter syndrome starts in your childhood. And you may have buried it because I was always a very confident, very you know, outgoing woman. I had a little bit of a swag about me. I just always was filled with the belief that there was nothing I couldn't do if I had the right training and the right desire until I took this job. Because so many people were putting, uh, pointing fingers at me and criticizing me, it tapped in to this thing from childhood that I completely forgot about. And I then the reason I'm talking about it now is I went to a conference over the past couple days and I was talking to women about imposter syndrome and playing big. And I and I was and I realized going into the conference my confidence level is, you know, high up. I like I like this version of Karen. Now I want I still know what version 2025 looks like, but I like this version of Karen. And so when I was going in, I was talking to all these women and I, it hit me on why I wasn't playing a bigger game. And once it hits you and you realize this is why I'm kind of an imposter, it's easier to heal. You know, I've had women say, well, I, I was never the center of attention because in my house it was be seen and not heard. Or I wasn't the center of attention because my sibling was always the center of attention and I was just better served sitting in and being quiet, or I was told I wasn't smart enough. A lot of reasons. For me, that was none of that. I can't even tell you how old I was when this happened. I was in, um, I'm pretty sure I was in junior high when it happened, and it just struck me, like I said at the conference this past week, it just was like a, whoa. I was supposed to go to this girl's birthday party, and we I mean, I'm from a very small town, so we were all friends, we all went to each other's birthday parties. It was magnificent. You always knew who was going and all that stuff. But something came up, and my mom was late or whatever. I, I couldn't go. 
So my mom comes home and one of the girls calls and says, are you coming to the party? And at this point, I was probably about 15, 20 minutes late. And so I, you know, I asked my mom, do you mind running me over? So of course she did. So I walk in there and I was probably at this point a half hour late, again, small town, didn't take long to get anywhere. And everybody was so excited. Everybody's like, yay, Karen's here, yay, yay, yay. We're so happy you came. And I looked at the birthday girl and she was like, oh, I'm so happy you came. But I became the center of attention in that moment. And in that moment in time, I can remember my mother, who was a very brittle diabetic, so she had health issues. She was in Catholic schools her whole life and she was left-handed. And back then, and probably some even now, believed that if you were left-handed, that meant that Satan, the devil, was in you. So they literally tried to beat the devil out of her. She would go home with bleeding, bleeding hands because the nuns would just beat on her hand to get her to use her right hand. So when I was born and I was left-handed, she was determined that I would remain left-handed. The only thing I do with my right hand to this day is golf. And that's a whole different story. So she was determined, so she never wanted to be the center of attention because when she was in school, it was it meant bad. Center of attention for her meant nuns bad, never good. So she didn't want me to be the center of attention. So she would teach me, you know, and I have a big personality. I know I'm kind of all over for this, I get that. I have a big personality, it's just how I, ma- I, w- I was made. I got this big personality, I like to have fun, I like to make people laugh. So when I got, when I, walked in this room and I was the center of attention it caused me to step back and I just realized that that's why I never played a full out game when I was in the military I was a medic and I was in my opinion well military as well I was a very good medic so I went from most people when you started in this where I was stationed at you started on the medical ward I started on a surgical ward just by happenstance the day I got there that I reported for duty, the person got you know transferred out really quick for, you know, for whatever reason, so I took the spot. But I was only supposed to be there for a week or two until they brought somebody in, transferred somebody from the medical to surgical. I stayed there for a year. And then when an, an, an opening happened in the ICU, CCU, we had six medics that worked there. An opening happened, I got put over there. So a lot of people are like, you know, why are you put over there? I've been here three years. I, you know, I've been a medic for 10 years. Why are you being put over there? Which also added to the imposter syndrome. Because I'd be like, well, I don't know. And they'd be like, well, you're not that good. All this stuff bought into my fear of being the center of attention. Now, if, if you knew me, if you know me, you're sitting there going, Karen, you always the center of attention. Only to a point. Only to a point will I allow it. And then I will back down. If I am up on stage and a lot of people line up to talk to me, I will start backing down. Because if there's other people, now if I'm the only speaker, I'm fine, but if there's other speakers, I want the spotlight over there. Because I feel like if the spotlight's on me, I'm going to get hurt. Now being the center of attention never meant I was really gonna get hurt, although I did get you know spanked really hard one time for being the center of attention. So you link all this stuff up, and that's why you play small. So you need to look back in your life and see when was that moment because when we're born we're born all out i mean not to get religious on you but god puts into us he chooses who we're going to be before we're born he chooses this person and he puts this person into us he also chooses all of our life experiences knowing that if we're following the path and we're following the breadcrumbs that are laid out for us we will begin to heal we will begin to step into who we're meant to be into that person he put here but he has little trials for us to work through before we can step into our greatness some people work through their trials fast and they step into their greatness early others step into their greatness and then you know they crash and burn it everybody's different and many way 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 too many damn women don't step into their greatness and they're sitting there you know getting ready to to depart and I believe that's when you show, are shown who you could have been and how close are you to that person. I want to be that person. I want to know that I achieved the goal, that I was the person that, was, that God chose me to be that put, that put here in my soul. So as you're working through these issues and as you're working through why you play small, you've got to, when you get those nudges, I mean, I can't tell you why that popped into my head this week while I was at a conference 
but it just popped right into my head and it was like okay now it now it makes sense i have a fear of being a center of attention or a better way to word it for me because as a ceo a lot of times i'm the center of attention i can only be so much the center of attention it can only be so big it can only be a certain and i haven't quite because i just discovered the shadow i haven't quite got to where my mind differentiates between it's okay for me to stand out and it's okay for me not to but because now i understand it i can start looking for it and if i feel like i'm getting a lot of attention i can stand there and say karen it's okay nothing's going to happen this is your path accept your path and go if you need help with this let me know because one of my gifts is i also read people really well i read people lightning fast i can look at somebody and i can tell you after a quick conversation what their blocks are what their desires are because i ask questions because i care because i want people to get that center of attention moment that moment when it's oh my god all these years over the stupid stupid thing my mom did just because she had the fear of being the center of attention she didn't want me to be the center of attention and i know i mean as she got older and her and i had I'm, and i've always been i was always close to my mom as she got older we would have talks about just you know how she'd be like you know i so wish i was like you 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 just interact with people so gracefully you don't think about it and i was like always like man i wish i could be like you because you're good at borders and borders you're good at you know boundaries all of that but because i can read people so quickly it does it is what makes me a good coach to be honest because i can look at people and i can be like okay i see who you could be i see who you can be if you chose to be and sometimes it's an overwhelming gift because i think who am i to look at somebody and you know i quit doing this years ago though i used to be like you know if you would just do this this and this you could be that you could be this i stopped doing that because that just screws with people and you know i got a message from spirit that you know you shouldn't interfere with people's lives you can be i am placed in their pathway so if they stumble into me and a conversation comes up i can say well yada 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 and move on and again this past week because i was at a big conference it came up in conversation with somebody and they were telling me about their imposter syndrome without realizing and i said well do you think it could be this and i remember she looked at me like oh my god i forgot all about that she says how do you know about it and I said, well, you mentioned it a long time ago, just in passing. You mentioned it like, you know, five years ago about your, you know, your fourth grade teacher. I don't want to identify too much about it, but, but your fourth grade teacher and the comment that, you know, he made to you. And she's like, wow, you're right, because that, that's my gift. But my gift for me does not translate. I have to really do a deep dive on me to find it. So when you're looking to get to your next level, when you're looking to step up and become that woman that you know you can be, you, you know it's here, you have that burning push to become her, you have that flame, but a fear, and you don't know what the fear is, the fear holds you back. The imposter syndrome kicks in, but you don't even know to call it the imposter syndrome. You don't know what it is. Stop back as soon as that fear hits and say, why am I feeling this fear? What is going on? that's causing me to feel the fear and if you need help reach out to me please reach out to me because I'm, i have come to the realization that that is my gift i was chosen to do this you know thankfully to the podcast i was listening to to help me understand all this that i was chosen to help guide women on their path so they could be their, their best selves so they could become the person they dream of so they could be the leader they want to be, the mother they want to be, the business owner they want to be, the wife, the daughter, whatever they want to be. Because once you see that big block, and for me it was the center of attention, all these years, and, it, and people that are listening to this are going to think, Karen, you bask in the center of attention, only to a point. But that point, that line, is keeping me from finishing my fourth book. It keeps me from talking about the first three books that I wrote. It keeps me from doing large seminars. It keeps me from, from doing a host of things because when you're up on stage, you are the center of attention. And I, like I say, I run an association, we do conferences. I am always up on stage. I am always talking to people and it makes me nervous. So that what, what do I do? How do I sabotage myself? I don't prepare. 
I will go up on stage to talk at our conference for a half hour and I have nothing scripted because that's how I sabotage myself. Because that way, when I make a mistake or I say something stupid, which is inevitable if you're, if you're doing it off the cuff. I mean, I do a lot of these podcasts off the cuff, but that's different. You, you know, you understand this is the real me. But then I get off the stage and I tell myself how stupid I am and why didn't I prepare and what's wrong with me? And you get into that victim, you know, poor me. Or whatever, whatever you guys run. Everybody runs a different script. But if we're not stepping into who we are supposed to step into, it is a form of self-sabotage, and we're self-sabotaging ourselves to hold ourselves back. But once you can understand what it is, and, it's, and I'm not saying for everybody it's a center of attention. It may not be. It may be in childhood you were raised um, really affluent, and now you don't have the money, and so that steps in your way. Maybe as a childhood you were raised very poor, and now you have a lot of money, and that steps into your way. Maybe um, when you used to get dressed up as a child to go to you know church or whatever, you had somebody make a comment to you one day. Or who knows who? Some rando who said, well, aren't you just a little cutie? Or aren't you just a little hottie? Nothing inappropriate about that, saying it to a kid, but how many, how many guys have said that? Well, aren't you a hottie? Or, you know, and then your dad says, let's not be drawing a lot of attention to yourself or whatever. That plays in. When you get recognized for something and, and then somebody tells you you shouldn't be like that, that's where these limiting beliefs, that's where these shadows are coming from. And you've got to start looking at them. I mean, that center of attention just, I sat there this morning and it was like I could hear the angels sing. I could hear the universe saying, finally, finally, she gets it, finally. And I finally get it. Now, I'm not saying it's not going to still step back me in the center of attention. Because when you have shadows, it takes a while to heal them. It takes a while to start rebuilding that neural connection. That neural connection between center of attention bad to center of attention good. And so you have to start changing your synapses. And your mind, again, is elastic. Is elastic. The, the elasticity of minds. Anything you want to change in there, you just have to do it enough time and get enough visual picture to change it. And so now I have to go into changing being a center of attention. Because the other thing I would do if I was the center of attention is I would purposely do something stupid. I would purposely send, say something stupid or I would, I would sabotage myself. And I hope a lot of you guys right now are just sitting there going, oh my gosh, you're right. And it could start as a small sabotage. You know, I just didn't come a little bit prepared. And then the second time I say something really stupid and somebody comments. And the fourth, third time I say something stupid and point to somebody and say something to them that I think is funny but they don't. And snowball, 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 snowball until I hide. And I hide in a big way. Now I have to undo all that. Now I have to give myself permission to be the center of attention. I have to give myself permission to, to show up authentically. Because within all of us is our authentic self. Because God chose us, chose to put that into us. And it's up to us to find that authentic self. And if you need any help with that, let me know. Because I am here to help you find your blue rose. Because your blue rose is your authentic self. Everybody has this blue rose in your soul. And for some, it's just kind of just a little twig of a rose. For others, it's getting ready to blossom. For me, my blue rose is getting ready to illuminate. Because I'm finally finding the issues. I'm finally taking the deep, deep dive. I'm finally taking the time on Karen. Now I have a lot going on in my personal life, and maybe it's because I'm just exhausted from everything going on, that my, my you know, self-imposed borders are dropping because I don't have time to rekindle with myself that you're a loser because I'm just so exhausted. For, for whatever, everybody, whatever it takes, when I quit drinking, you know, I had many, many epiphanies. But I knew there was a big one, and I just couldn't get to it. Well, the universe is like, we're just going to exhaust you. We're going to hit you with so many things in April that you're just going to be so tired. And we're going to send the right person at the right time. And this is how it works, that right person at that right time to make a comment to you about being a center of attention. And it's going to click. Now, the universe has probably sent many messengers over the years. Many. I'm, I'm in my 60s, so many, 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 many messengers over the years. It didn't click. So the universe will just keep going and going until they find that right person, that right time, that right person to, to be the messenger. And I hope I'm being the messenger for you. And I hope as you listen to my podcast, I become your messenger. Not because I want to be some guru, 
but because I've gone through a lot of hard times like a lot of you guys. I have abuse, I have trauma, I have failure, 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 failure. I have been told horrendous things about myself. Even though I was a CEO, I get told horrendous things about myself. You just gotta work through it. And on this podcast, and on my YouTube channel, and my TikTok channel, that's exactly what we're gonna do, you guys. We're gonna work through these issues together. We're gonna figure out what their shadows are, we're gonna heal them. Because I want every one of you, I want every woman, when you get to your deathbed, to watch that movie of who you're supposed to be and say, damn, I did it. I hope this helped. If you have any comments, anything you want me to talk about, please put it in the comment section. Um, if you want to reach out to me and have a one-on-one -on -one talk, just you know, send it over on my, you know, on my email. And let, let's talk about it or put that in the comment section as well. I am here to help serve you because I want every person on this planet to find their blue rose and to blossom into the person you're meant to be. Have a great day, y'all.